All right, today's question is kth smallest element in a BST. So we're given a BST and they want us to find the kth smallest element. Um, in this case, the first smallest element, so the smallest element is one itself. And in this case, we want to find the third smallest element. So from the smallest, we have one, two, three. So it happens to also be three. So let's take a look at our own example. We have eight, four, six, and 10. So suppose they want us to find, I don't know, the second smallest element. Well, to find the second smallest element, the first thing that we want to do is we want to find out what, what's the smallest element, right? So we can't really answer this question without knowing what the smallest element is. So in this case, the smallest element is four, which means that the second smallest element is actually going to be the, the thing that's the, the next biggest, which will be six. So in fact, BSD has a very nice property. BSD has a property that for each node, uh, everything on the left is smaller and everything on the right is bigger. So for example, with eight here, so if we kind of draw a line down this eight, everything to the left of eight have to be smaller. So we have four and six and everything to the right of eight is bigger. So we have 10 here. And similarly for four, we have that on the right, we have bigger things, so six, eight, 10. On the left, we have smaller things. In this case, there's nothing smaller than four, so there's, there's nothing. Okay, so how do we find the smallest element? So we can do this re with recursion. So all we have to do is we'll just keep recursing left. We'll keep recursing left, and then when we can't recurse left anymore, we can print. At that point, we will print the smallest element. All right, so if we imagine uh, our algorithm here, we would start at eight, and then eight here would recurse left into four, and then four would recurse left into nothing. And when there's nothing, we stop and we go back. So since four is done recursing left, the only thing I'll do is print. So we have our smallest, uh, our smallest element. And in fact, if I just add a recurse right here, what we've created here is called an in-order traversal. And for a binary search tree, this will actually give us the sorted array. So everything from smallest to, to biggest. So you can see here, we're at four, we printed. Now we recurse right, which is six. Six goes left, where there's nothing, comes back, we print six. And then six goes right, where there's nothing. So we come back, uh, and then we come back again. 4 is done recursing right, so 4 is finished. 4 goes back up to 8, and now 8 is finished the recursing left part of its algorithm, so now I can print. And now 8 recurses right. And then from here, 10 goes to the left where there's nothing, so 10 now prints. And then 10 goes to the right where there's nothing, and then it comes back to 8, and then we finish our algorithm. So you can see here with in-order traversal, uh, we get to print uh, in a sorted manner from the smallest number in our BST to the biggest. So let's give this a go. Let's just create an in-order traversal first. So we'll have some sort of a helper. Uh, for now, let's just make it take the same parameters. And how we do an in-order traversal is if node.left is not equal null, uh, we will go left. Uh, and then everything in the middle is print or do something. So for now, let's just print. And then similarly, if we can go right, we are going to go right. So here we have helper, node right, okay. Uh, I'll just return something of a dummy value for now. And then here we'll just return helper at root at k. So let's see if we implemented in order traversal correctly. So for this example, uh, I wonder if I can see it. Yes, so for exa this example here, three, one, two, four, if we were to print it out in a sorted manner, we should see one, two, three, four. And indeed here, we do see one, two, three, four. So this tells us that this block of code here uh, gets called, gets called from uh, smallest to biggest. So what we would like to do is just keep track of, of some counter here, right? So every time we hit this, 
our arcade counter increases. So the first time, if our arcade starts at zero, uh, when we hit here, now we found the first smallest. When we hit here again, now we found the second smallest. So we could do something like um, if kth is now equal to k, then we can return the node.val saying we found the kth smallest. Now the problem with this is that we kind of make made this out of thin air. So we want to actually pass it in as a parameter into our kth smallest. So here we would have kth, uh, here we'd also have kth, and then in the beginning, we will start out with the zeroth. So as we come in here, it would become one, and then when it gets called again, it would become two. Except it doesn't really work that way, because what's going to happen is we increment this case here, but this is local to this function right here. So when we come out of this helper, uh, this case is passed in as a copy, so we don't actually know that change has happened to it. So the way that we do that is instead of passing an integer, we'll pass in an array instead. So we'll pass in case, which will just have one element, which is uh, the case. So case is just an array with a single element, which is the case. So in this case, when we pass it in, we can actually modify uh, this variable. So we can modify this first element inside it. So what we want to do here is case at zero plus plus. If case at k that 0 is equal to k, return node.val, uh, no longer need to print. And then here we can pass in k. Uh, yep. And then here we want to pass in a new interray. And again, we start it at 0. OK, so now we have this right here. So all we have to do is now we keep track of what's being returned. So for example here, uh, with k equals 1, what will happen is we'll start here with 8. So 8 is going to get called with 8. Now we want to find the first smallest, and so far we have 0. And then as we come down here to 4, uh, 4 to the left is going to be null. So nothing will happen. But 4 will increment this k at 0 by 1. So now k at 0 is actually now going to be equal to 1. And since k is equal to 1, what we're trying to find here, we're going to return the value of 4. So in this case, uh, left is equal to 4. And now we have the updated value that on the left subtree, we found our answer. So what we want to do here is if k is 0 is equal to k, so we found our answer here, we can return left instead. So we can uh, exit our our in-order traversal earlier if we found our answer. Similarly here, int right equals helper to the right subtree. If we found the kth smallest on our right subtree, we can just return right and exit earlier. Okay, so let's see if this works. Cool, so I'll submit, and then we can chat about the runtime. Okay, so you can see here, uh, what's going to happen is first, we have to find the kth smallest. So actually, we have to first find the smallest. How, like how many times would this algorithm run? Well, first we find the smallest. So you can think of this as O of H, where H is the height of the, height of the binary search tree. Because the smallest, we're going to hit a leaf node, and that leaf node is going to be bounded by the height of your binary search tree. And afterwards, we have to find the kth smallest. So this will get called uh, k times until we find the kth smallest, at which point we will start to exit early. And then everything up along the stack will also exit early as we come back to, to the root node. So this is going to have a total runtime of O of H uh, plus k for the kth smallest. Okay, that's it for today, and I'll see you on the next one.